This is Jewish Spotlight, a weekly television program presented by Chabad Lubavitch of Long Island, featuring various aspects of modern Jewish life and Jewish culture. Now, here is your host, Rabbi Tuvia Teldin. Shalom, and welcome to the Jewish Spotlight. For many of you who are familiar with Chabad, whether it be through the newspapers or television, whether it be from personal involvement at a Chabad house or having read about the movement, all are in agreement that the growth of Chabad around the world has been absolutely astounding. And as a result, the, the mystery is there as to what is the secret behind this. And of course, we know that the motivating factor behind all the growth of Chabad is the Rebbe. The Baba Rebbe has been an inspiration for thousands of young people, people of all ages, to be able to spread the beauty of Judaism and to have true Avish Yisrael and true dedication and love for our fellow human being, our fellow Jew. As a result, I think it's important for us to have a little bit of a better understanding of who is the Rebbe, who was the Rebbe in, a, in, in his activities, in his programs, in his day-to-day -day involvement with the Jewish people. And it's truly a great honor for me personally to have with us as a guest today a person who is, has proven great leadership in Lubavitch, both when the Rebbe was with us physically and since the Rebbe has left us physically, and it's a pleasure to have with us for a discussion that I think you'll find very insightful during the next half hour, discussion with Rabbi Yehuda Krinsky, personal secretary to the Rebbe and a person who holds many positions that the Rebbe himself gave Rabbi Krinsky as a leadership role in Lubavitch. Rabbi Krinsky, it's truly a pleasure to have you with us today. It's nice to be here. I want to ask you, just to start, I know you've been with the Rebbe Secretariat for many, many years, I believe since 1957. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit of how, as a young student, you came into that position, and then we'll go on from there as far as how we go on, how Lubavitch has transformed itself since then, because you've seen so many of those changes that have taken place in the last decades. It really was 1957. I was engaged during the summer of 1957 to marry just before Rosh Hashanah. And I was summoned by Rabbi Kharakov. Rabbi Kharakov was the Rebbe's chief of staff, uh, who retained that position until uh, the Rebbe passed away. He passed away just a year before the Rebbe. Um, and he asked me what I was planning to do with my future, if I had any special livelihood in mind that I was endeavored to undertake. And uh, I told him that I really had, I was very open. I really hadn't decided on anything, neither had my uh, wife-to-be. And uh, he, he said to me, uh, it was an offer that one couldn't refuse. He said to me, he asked me if I would be willing to join, become part of the Rebbe Secretariat. I was shocked. For I can imagine. <laughs> for the offer, uh, very honored and pleased. Uh, had you had any interaction with Rabbi Khadakov or with the Rebbe before that that would indicate something that there was an interest? Not that it would indicate an interest, but I, I met the Rebbe for the first time in 1946 when I came here as a young student before Bar Mitzvah. Uh, I remember our, our first meeting very vividly in 770. It was uh, Hoshana Rabbah uh, the, during the holiday of Sukkot just before Simchas Torah. Uh, and I saw much of him during that weekend, and I was just mesmerized by him, by everything about him. Uh, and then as a student over the next uh, 11 years, uh, we had conversations. The Rebbe used to speak publicly even before 1950, before he assumed the helm of the worldwide Lubavitch movement. I always made it my business to attend them on the Sabbath and otherwise, and uh, we grew very close. Uh, I knew Rebbe Kharakov uh, quite well, as, having, as he, he was the chief of staff of the Rebbe. Uh, I would consult him and discuss many things with him over the years as a young student, as an older student. But it was quite a surprise when the offer came in the summer I can of, imagine. Uh, summer of, of 1957. Now, you've seen the growth of Chabad. You've seen the Rebbe take the Chabad organization and movement from its small starts, starting point in Crown Heights, which was perhaps uh, 10, 20 families, and to be able to expand it into this international movement. And you've been a personal witness to the Rebbe taking it step by step. Can you give us some comments about that from the inside out as far as how that took place and, and, and how you perceived it during the course of that transition? Well, I do remember Lubavitch in America in its uh, embryonic stage, uh, when the families were limited. Uh, it was actually during the, during the World War II, during the Holocaust, 
Dr. Lubavitch uh, arrived in this country, the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe's predecessor, arrived here in 1940, March of 1940. And um, the Rebbe emerged during, during the uh, Holocaust. Uh, he arrived in the United States in 1941, somewhat more than a year after his father-in-law and his family. And uh, that was really when people got a first glimpse of who the Rebbe really was. Mm -hmm although we really never understood what the Rebbe really was, but you could get a, uh, 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 an idea as to his, uh, the degree of scholarship and uh, his capacity to lead and his administrative ab ability. Uh, that became evident in the early 40s, mid-40s, and when 1950 came and uh, his father-in-law passed away, there was no doubt <coughs> in the mind of us young fellows and, the teen and our teens that this, he was going to succeed the Rebbe because he had all the qualities uh, mm -hmm. that were right. needed. And uh, he did take over the helm in 1950. And uh, from that point on, there was a, he, he created a new dimension in the world of Lubavitch uh, in the term, in terms of outreach and uh, building new institutions away from New York, out of the city, where many Jewish institu institutions existed. So from the very beginning, that was clearly the Rebbe's agenda to begin that outreach motion. I'm not sure. Well, that must have been part of his agenda because that's what he did. Uh, nobody ever knew what the Rebbe's agenda was. Uh, let me just back up for a minute, if I may. Uh, when the Rebbe passed, the previous Rebbe passed away in 1950, uh, the world was, was at a great loss because his predecessor was a very, very renowned leader, Rebbe, uh, counseled many, many people. And for, to the most of the world, the Rebbe was still an unknown quantity. But he possessed all those things that the world needed, not only that Lubavitch needed as a leader, but that the world needed right. for leadership. Uh, the Jewish world was decimated during and after the Holocaust. It had not recovered for many years after the Holocaust. Israel was a very a new uh, institution, a new country that had not yet developed to, to capture the imagination of the total Jewish community worldwide. And here emerged a person, a single individual, who possessed all those qualities that the Jewish people need at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, to be a Jewish leader, a religious Jewish leader, one must possess scholarship. He must be well grounded in Jewish study. Jewish people are known as the people of the book. That means something. And there are a lot of books. And uh, he was well versed in all the realms of Torah, the exoteric, the esoteric, uh, the Talmud, if you will, uh, the Hasidut, Kabbalah, and uh, he was head and shoulders about every, about above everybody else. And the Jewish people as a whole needed a leader that was extremely well versed, head and shoulders above, above everybody else in terms of Jewish scholarship. Uh, they also needed someone who had administ administrative ability, uh, who could run the Jewish world, as it were, administra uh, administratively in terms of building institutions that would reach into the lives of the Jews no matter where they were. And then the quality of leadership, which encompasses all these things and overall. And of course, the Rebbe inspired people like nobody else in the world could possibly like no, do. And he, he, he really... And I mean nobody, because to take thousands of young people as the Rebbe has and inspire them in the way the Rebbe has is just... Uh, well, he brought, in those early years, he rehabilitated Jewish life around the world. And he instituted, he brought, he, he, he inculcated new life uh, into the Jewish bloodstream. Jews from all shades and all backgrounds and all over the world. Uh, in the middle 50s, late 50s and early 60s, he set up about 20, 25 new Chabad houses in this country and elsewhere. Uh, and that was a totally new concept at the that time. That was a new concept and it was, it was received very well. And they became very, very successful and the growth was rapid. And as, the, as time went on, and the student body studying under the Rebbe's tutelage grew uh, and came of age, uh, they were sent to different cities in this country and other, other continents, South America, Africa, uh, Australia, Asia, Europe, Israel, of course. and. Uh, they, start, they started building new institutions one after the other, brick by brick. Which incidentally, just if I could insert, sure. obviously from what you're saying, the Rebbe was a leader who saw the whole world as his congregation, so to say. 
Absolutely. because he felt that personal responsibility for every single Jew in every single corner of the globe, wherever they might be. Absolutely. And there was no other rabbi who was I even in the slightest bit pretending to take that position. The Rebbe was actually doing it and doing it genuinely and doing it effectively. Well, he was a leader. Yes. And he led. Uh, and he was very emphatic in the leadership. At the same time, a very humble person. Uh, people never really understood the Rebbe in that, on the one hand, he was a very humble person. On the other hand, he had this enormous uh, charisma of leadership that caught on like fire in the hearts of Jews, of all Jews, no matter who they were, men, women, children, from, where, from wherever they lived. And within, within years, with 200 institutions, 500 institutions, 1,000 institutions. Right. To date, we have more than 2,600 yeah, institutions. It just snowballed just incredibly. It's, it's not stopping. Uh, new shluchim, new emissaries go out every single week. New institutions are founded every month. Um, uh, it is really second to none in terms of Jewish uh, establishment, organizations. There's nothing like it. There right. is nothing like it. Tell me, I would like to, if you don't mind now, just to show a tape of the Rebbe. We can talk a little bit about it during the time of the tape. If we could put that on, we'll be able to see. This is a tape of the Rebbe giving out dollars. Mm -hmm. now it, this is a, uh, maybe you could explain to our audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what they're going to be seeing while we put that on. headquarters at 770 Eastern Parkway uh, and uh, uh, trailing people off from in, all walks of life, trailing people off into from the street, around the block, people Jews from and -Jews. all walks of life from all, all over the world. I met many, many of them on the Sundays. People would fly in from Europe to JFK, take a cab to 770, get in right. line, get a dollar bill and fly right back home. As people overseas. do now also to go to visit to, the, to the resting uh, place in the old, old Montefiore. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. But that was very common, very prevalent. Right. Uh, that's and all it, they wanted. And it was that personal contact with the Rebbe, to look in the Rebbe's eyes. And uh, exactly. so many people who saw the Rebbe yes. felt that the Rebbe literally looked right through them. I've heard this from so many people. You said gone. it very well, because I heard it from thousands upon thousands of people. The people who came from Europe, just it was a fleeting second that they were gazed upon by the Rebbe with his, with his pure blue eyes that were very, very penetrating, uh, that captured the person. and. They'll never forget it. At that moment, they say, there was nothing else in the world that existed. It's like time between other, uh, times, uh, The Rebbe had nothing else in the world, just the individual, and mm -hmm. the, the indi individual had nothing else in mind other than right. the Rebbe. And the Rebbe cared for children, and of course, this was only one aspect of the Rebbe's many, many public appearances, because the Rebbe spoke on Shabbos, on the Sabbath, and on the holidays. The Rebbe was involved intimately with all the holiday activities, and was very, very involved with the lives of each of the people who would come to him for advice and for guidance and counsel and uh, literally guided personally the growth of, of uh, the Chabad community around the world on a very personal level. I think it was that personal involvement but that was so not, not only the Chabad Lubavitch community, the Rebbe single-handedly, with the help of his shluchim, literally changed the landscape of Jewish life all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, you've seen that probably personally also because you've traveled since since 1994, you've traveled the world as a, as a representative for Lubavitch to be able to go to these places and have seen Chabad as it's been growing. And maybe you could talk a little it's, bit it's, about it's, that, it's, those experiences you've had. It's pleasantly astounding. Uh, until 1994, I hardly left Brooklyn uh, for those 40 years I was uh, on the Rebbe's staff. But unfortunately, since then, I've been able to travel. And at this point, I really relish it. I become myself invigorated by what I see whether it's in this country or abroad. I was just in Israel about a week ago for 12 hours to meet some people. I came back very invigorated, uh, tired but invigorated. Um, you see the masses, literally masses of people, the connection they have with the particular shliach ha-shluchim, the, the local Chabad Lubavitch institution on Shabbat during the week with all the activities that go on, the study groups and these camps and the, uh, it, 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 the whole array of activity and the love that they feel for their shliach, for what they've done for them, which really belongs to the Rebbe, of course, uh, and how these people's lives were touched by the Rebbe, those who go back before 1992, 
uh, who came to the Rebbe for dollars, right. uh, had the opportunity to meet the Rebbe at some occasion. Uh, it, it, is, it is a turning point in their lives. Uh, it's, it's what, what is that? What is that? Uh, do you try to explain it at all? I mean, of course, as Hasidim, we, we know that, that a Rebbe is a special... Uh, to use the word special is really understating it, but there's something in the creation itself that God placed a Moses of every generation into that generation, and the Rebbe serves in that role. And so we know that there's some very special dimension there of the connection between the Rebbe and that each and every single Jew. And by seeing these Jews, you're literally seeing the proof in the pudding, as they say, as far as how uh, so many thousands of people can respond to one individual on that level. I don't think you can really explain it. It, it isn't. It's inexplicable. I, I don't think one can articulate it. It's a feeling very deeply felt in the soul of every individual uh, because the Rebbe's soul touched them. Uh, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that the Rebbe car carried on through all the years an enormous, voluminous correspondence with thousands upon thousands of people. You might ask, how did he squeeze that into a very busy day? He actually dictated letters by the thousands. Uh, we've published ne nearly 40 volumes of his letters. And that's on top of about 36 volumes of his talks and 38, another 30 yeah, yeah, 38 yeah, volumes yeah. and 30 volumes of his, his deep Hasidic discourses. Yes, and, 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 yes, and, and, and his Talmud, Talmudic... Uh, 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 expositions. Uh, 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 expositions, yes. Uh, the people, I mean, people who had letters from him, of course, they cherish it. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, uh, it's a treasure to each and every one. But um, after all is said and done, the Rebbe will always remain, at least in my, in my eyes, as an enigma that we really never got to know him. I mean, as close as you were. And I've heard this from many people. The ne closer they've gotten to the Rebbe, the more of an enigma the more distant you felt. And I would say this, categor I would say this ca categorically that, that I would see the Rebbe every day. Uh, I would go into the Rebbe's room nearly every day, either for what I had to go in or he asked me to come in. And every time you touched the doorknob to or knocked on the door to go in, you had, your heart skipped a beat. It wasn't just, you never, it wasn't by rote, you never got used to it. Every time it was an adventure. Every time was a fresh experience, no matter what the issue was. There was nothing simple. Everything was important. Um, every individual was important. Every individual was important. And that's the greatness of leadership that, that the Rebbe exemplified. Uh, when Moses was to pass on and God told him to anoint his uh, understudy, Yeshua, uh, he at Moses pleaded with God to appoint a leader for the Jewish people who will be able to encounter and approach each individual according to his individual spirit. In other words, the leader must understand every, every individual and understand the spirit and the, the soul, the essence of that individual, man, woman, or child, and deal with that person on that level. So he must, it was a multi-person who, who, who who was an umbrella, if you will, mm -hmm. <laughs> for all the individuals. And every single person felt it. It was noticeable in the dollars. It was noticeable at a Fabrengen when the Rebbe looked at somebody who was maybe 50 yards away and told them to say l'chaim. The, the individual knew what the Rebbe meant. The Rebbe knew what he meant. That connection was made from the distance just by saying l'chaim over a cup of wine. The, the videos are available, right. fortunately, today to see that. Uh, it, w it, was, uh, it was, on the one hand, totally encompassing in terms of leadership and totally involved with the individual, never lost sight of the individual and the needs and the cry. Uh, he could be involved in the loftiest spiritual heights and yet at the same time remember that there's a world out there that needs him and deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, on an hour to, on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Um, there could have been 99 uh, uh, happy tidings that he got in a particular day that should make him happy but if there was one thing, one cry, if some person was unfulfilled or needed something, there was something lacking. He felt their pain. You, you, he felt, you saw it in his face. And uh, that, 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 was o that would overwhelm him, the extent of that person, that individual, and not lose sight of the second person. Uh, the dollars, people going by with the, uh, to receive dollars, everyone will tell you a story, not just the eye contact with the rapper, but everyone had a, many of them, most of the people had a brief, request of the Rebbe, whether it was a blessing 
for family, for children, business, health, whatever it may have been in the whole kaleidoscope of life. Mm -hmm. And the Rebbe responded briefly with a few words. And, and it worked. And then they're, right, and it, it worked. worked in a sense that so many people have so many thousands of stories to tell of, thousands of thousands how the of Rebbe's blessings literally came true and were God's words to that person to be able to change their life and change their situation and fulfill their requests. Absol absolutely, absolutely. You, know, you mentioned something also about leadership in terms of, of uh, coming closer to the Rebbe and seeing that greatness how so often we have a crisis of leadership in our generation, in the world at large. Mm -hmm. And why? Because the closer very often a person gets to a leader, the more they get to see that they're really not what they appear to be. And a lot of it's quick bites, or TV bites, or it's, it's the PR behind the person. But the, other, the closer a person got, as you were saying, the, the more the greatness shone forth. And Absolutely. And that's something that, that our generation sorely, sorely misses. And thank God we have the Rebbe, and we have the Rebbe, and we feel the Rebbe is alive with us, and it was alive in, in every sense of the world, except not, unfortunately, physically. In the physical sense. Well, one thing is for sure, and we all witness this, that the exponential growth of the institutions and the exponential growth of the shluchim, the young men and women who devote their lives, as we say, you get a one-way ticket to where you're going, <laughs> uh, is growing by far more uh, than it did in the Rebbe's lifetime with us. Yeah. So there's, there's, no, there's no question of the fact that it's his blessing. I, I don't think there's a shliach us. in this world who doesn't feel the Rebbe looking over his shoulder right. every instant of the day and feeling the blessing with the successes, with the enormous success, which really has no rationale. Tell us a little bit about that success. Having had the personal experience, and you've flown literally all over the world, and you've seen Chabad in Israel, you've seen Chabad in South America. Is there any particular situation you could tell us about an experience you had that, that just really touched you as far as how the Rebbe's work was able to, to have such a tremendous effect in the community? Well, just by seeing it. It wasn't there just a couple of years ago. And now uh, I was in Florida in a very small town that just was just built up. The Shliach was there for four and a half years. By the time I got down there, he had a magnificent building built on, a, on, on two acres that cost him two and a half million dollars. And the money came, the community paid for it. He has, he has, he has, has some debts on it, of course. Uh, but, but he didn't dream in the wildest stretch of his imagination when he, went out, when he went out there that within four or five years, he would really have such a facility. And people, hundreds of people, his minion Shabbos is 120 people in the Shabbos, Wonderful. in a community that really w w was just open fields mm -hmm. uh, seven, eight years ago. Really. See, I think what a lot of people don't understand is the scope of Lubavitch. Perhaps here in the New York area, people know about 770 Eastern Parkway, people know about a couple of Chabad houses here and there and around Long Island, but it's only perhaps when the people travel, whether it be the far distances and seeing three Chabad houses in Bangkok or seeing Australia or going to South Africa or seeing Israel, they realize the scope that the Rebbe represents in terms of, of encompassing the whole of the Jewish world. It's just totally overwhelming. Interestingly enough, uh, my office at headquarters is totally inundated, constantly, especially during the summer, vacation time in, in this area, uh, of people going to different places, all parts of the world, near and far, and they want to know if there's a mikveh, if there's a minion, if there's a kosher restaurant, right. if there's kosher food. Right. So and they apparently, the bar, apparently, so apparently has gotten around. <laughs> the word has gotten out. <laughs> And, and everyone, thank God, we can fulfill the request of each one because yeah. wherever they want to go. I tell them whenever they come to my office, they say, is there a Chabad house here? So the question is no longer if there's a Chabad house. The question is what is the address of the Chabad house in this particular town? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So the word has gotten out. But uh, 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 seriously, I, I think the, the world is really has yet to learn about the enormity and the magnitude of what the Rebbe has accomplished, as I said before, in changing the landscape, yeah. the Jewish landscape. And this is only the, the beginning, world. because the, the snowball continues to go. It's like it to one of my uh, supporters and friends who joined us at the annual banquet, which is a tremendous showcase of the, all of the shluchim, all the emissaries of the Rebbe from around the world. And uh, he said, you know, it's Lubavitch, it's a train that just ca can't be stopped. It's Absolutely. just uh, charging forward. And even with all, this, all the things that, that, that happen and that, that surround Lubavitch, but the focus, I think, is definitely always there on the fellow Jew and the Rebbe's teachings of being able to go out and help your fellow human being. And that's a focus that can't be beat because that's a focus that's it's, um, it's without ego. It's just there to be able to, to make the world a better place, to elevate the people, to help to bring Mashiach closer, to help to, to bring more mitzvahs into the world. And it's an, it's, it's an approach that the Rebbe taught us and it's an approach that can't be criticized. 
a very important contributing factor to, to the success of the shluchim is that the people really feel that there is no ego, as you mentioned before. They're not there for themselves. They're there for the people. And uh, that, that is, uh, they feel that deeply mm -hmm. in their hearts. And that's... But that comes I from mean, the Rebbe. That, yeah, that, that yeah, goes back to that, but that's the, what attracts them. Right. And very often the people, I think, in the Chabanos don't realize how much the Shluchim are, are there only because of the Rebbe, and that the, that the Rebbe is their inspiration, and is the, the Rebbe's teachings are what gives them that drive to continue and to have the approach that the Shluchim have, that these emissaries represent from day to day. It's a very unique quality that uh, these Shluchim and Shluchos have been inspired with. And it, it's contagious. Uh, and the people feel it, they recognize it, and, and it makes a difference. It makes a difference in their lives, and uh, it's not going to stop. Uh, there are always smaller cities, smaller communities with uh, just a handful of Jews, and when we, uh, when we uh, uh, are through with the larger communities, we'll go into the smaller ones. It's, it's endless. It's endless. Right. Until, until Mashiach comes, we're on a... Uh, we have plenty of work to do. Plenty of work to do. And, uh, well, very, Kinski, important, I, very important. I, I want to thank you very, very much for being with us and for giving for us sure. a little bit of insight into your involvement and also, of course, uh, how the Rebbe has taken the Jewish people, not just the Chabad movement, but the Jewish people, and taken step by step in so many important directions over the course of the last 50 years. And the fact is, I think for our, our audience, it's a very important message because they're... Sometimes people hear Chabad, they hear Lubavitch, it sounds different, strange, they're not familiar with it, they've heard things, they've read things. The fact is, there's, there's a movement with a great heart. And as you see from Rabbi Krinsky, and as you know, those of you who have had personal contact with Chabad rabbis, and have seen the face and, and their wives and their children, and seen the reality of, of who and what Chabad really is, which is the people behind the Chabad. It's not the name, the title, it's, it's the reality of day-to-day -day life. And it's that message which is so beautiful and pierces the heart and pierces behind all of the externalities and is important for, for every Jew to be able to benefit from. And I hope that everybody will, will write down the number at the end of today's television show and be able to call up and find out more about Chabad or where their local Chabad is, wherever they might be seeing this, and, and really benefit a little bit more from, from what Chabad is. Hopefully. So I want to thank you very much. Any last word? Uh, I, I think it is important if people do want to know more about Chabad, they can call us or write to us. We will send them information as to locations uh, all over the so world. The number for headquarters is, I know it myself, and that's where I report to. So it's 718 <laughs> 774 right That's 718 uh, or look up Chabad.org, and you can find out all you want to know about Chabad. Or 770 Eastern Parkway. Right, or right to 770 Eastern Parkway. Thank you. Rabbi Krinsky, it's been an honor, and thank you very much for being with us. Pleasure. And for everybody out there, go out and make your world a better place. In the meantime, we'll see you next week. Same time, same station, the Jewish Spotlight. Shalom.